Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host Jennifer. This is the yarn we're using today and this is the project we're making for. Peow! <laughs> so we're in the car. This is really strange. But <laughs> Juju's the cameraman for me. Um, today's Peow yarn of the week, Premier yarn of the week, is anti-pilling everyday acrylic from Premier Yarns. Now I'm using the color Lemon. It took about a little less than three quarters of the skein to make this cool headrest. So I'm going to say if you're going to make a matching set for both of your car, for both of your seats and your front seat, you're going to need two balls of this. This is currently $4.99 per ball on Premier's website, and it will, of course, as always, be linked below. This is 100% anti-pilling acrylic, and the reason we're using anti-pilling acrylic for this is because this. Okay, we know that when you're driving, like sometimes you're resting your head, and your hair clip will be back there, or like you just rub it. And you're rubbing and your head is going to hit that a hundred million times and we don't want pills to occur. And pills are those little fuzz balls that you get on yarn when like it rubs together or for it's rubbed on itself or whatever. And with anti-pilling acrylic, at least with the Premier Yarns anti-pilling acrylic, it's the one I'm most familiar with. It has anti-pilling technology so even if it starts to want to get fuzzes, if you take this off and throw it in the washer and dryer, A, it's not going to shrink, B, it's not going to fade, and C, those little pills that may form are going to fall right off in the wash. That's Premier's guarantee with this yarn. It's one of the reasons it's my favorite yarn of all times. Um, also, it's it's created in a way so that the pills don't form as easily or as naturally with other fibers. So I do tell a story that I'm going to repeat for you right now, but I tell a story that I was, um, while I was doing the tutorial for this, I saw a woman driving down the road and she had a, a crocheted wheel cover on her steering wheel and it was pilled all, uh, it looked terrible. And I know that's what made me want to use the anti-pilling acrylic because I know that that gets touched a lot. This is going to get touched a lot. So the anti-pilling acrylic is a must. Um, I And I chose anti-pilling acrylic also because the sun that beats in your car can fade yarn really quick. And this is less likely to fade because the color is not just dyed in here. It is like in the yarn. So it's created with a plastic type thing. And I think the way they make this kind, and I'm not 100% on this. I think the way they make this yarn is they use yellow plastic to turn it into yarn instead of dyeing it because acrylic doesn't take dye as easily. Again, could be totally wrong. But we're going to get started. We're going to make this really cute little headrest. I decided on lemon yellow because this color was on my bookshelf and I didn't realize I had it. And it's very bright and vibrant and I thought it was really pretty. Uh, you can do any color that you want. But um, yeah, let's get to this tutorial. Let's go down to the table. All right, to get started on this tutorial, we are using the Premier Everyday Anti-Pilling Acrylic. This is an old label. This label is, I want to say three years old, so it doesn't look this old <laughs> in the newer yarns. The newer uh, yarns are, have a very sleek white label that just says Premier Everyday Anti-Pilling Acrylic. There's not pictures or anything like extra colorful. They're just very... I like the new labels way better than this label, but this is what we have. And I honestly thought I was going to do pink, like with Juju's car, um, for this tutorial, but I saw this this lemon yellow, and it is, a matter of fact, called lemon. It is the color lemon. It, this is so pretty, and I think this is just going to brighten up the car. The reason we are using anti-pilling acrylic instead of a basic acrylic. Now, this stuff is, as of today, I think it's $4.99. I think it's $4.99 a ball. Yeah, $4.99 a ball. So for the grand total of $4.99, plus obviously shipping because this isn't widely available in stores, but for the grand total of $4.99, you could have some really cute headrest covers or... Um, I also did say in an earlier video, and I don't, I haven't recorded the intro to this video yet, so I don't know what I say in the intro. You can also adjust this pattern to cover the back of, like, if you're wheelchair bound, if you want to cover the back of your wheelchair with a, um, a headrest cover, you can absolutely do that to jazz up your wheelchair, you know, make yourself feel pretty. Have a cute chair, right? So I'm going to tell you how to measure this for whatever car or vehicle you are in, including your wheelchair. Um, if you got a headrest on 
let's say your favorite recliner if it has like a headrest you can do that too <laughs> this is completely completely uh, customizable so for me you don't have to measure exactly you could actually if you're see I did this as a car project so for me I just measured it behind my head while we were going so this is gonna be kind of an estimate because I'm not gonna run back out to the car because I just got home I'm not gonna run back and forth so we're gonna guess this and we're gonna make it work don't do that with your own cars or your own whatever like actually measure this so what we're going to do is we're going to chain, I think about, for my car seat headrest cover, I drive a minivan. Um, I'm going to aim for a chain of about 8 inches. This is going to be stretchy, so you can make it a teensy bit smaller than what you think and stretch it over and it will, it will look nicer and it will stay on a little better. Um, but just try to measure the top part of your headrest. So the very top of the headrest of your car that faces the ceiling. Measure that top part because that's what we're crocheting right now. If it's eight inches, make a chain and it doesn't matter what your stitch count is at this point, okay? We're not counting anything, we're just, we're crocheting to measure. All right, so I'm aiming for eight inches and I'm hitting my camera with my crochet hook. One, two, Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That ain't it. 22, 23, 24. Now, I, I know that I get asked this a lot in the comments. That ain't it either. What size hook are you using? It doesn't matter. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. All right, we're at almost nine inches with 30 stitches. We're just gonna go with that. It'll be fine, it will work out. So nine inches, 30 stitches. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, you don't need to do that. You don't need to use the same, whatever, whatever you want to use that you feel is the best. Five millimeter, 5.5, six millimeter, six and a half, it's not gonna matter. It's gonna change the way the stitches look, but you're measuring this to your headrest, so it's not gonna matter. So I got 30 here, so I'm gonna chain one, two, three, while pinching the 30, 30th stitch, and in that 30th stitch, I'm gonna put two more double crochets, because that extra chain three counts as a double crochet. So we chain 30, I chained three more that counted as a double crochet, and then I put two more double crochets in that stitch. And then we're just going to put double crochets in every stitch back to that knot, the slip knot we made. And Bentley is trying to get out of my office, even though he insisted on being in here. And he needs to go lay down in his doggy bed because I bought him a really cute doggy bed and he can go lay down in it. We're just gonna double crochet in each. I'm really like digging this yellow color. I don't know about you, but this is cute. <laughs> I really thought I was gonna do pink. I don't generally go towards yellow. Yellow is not, like I love yellow paired with pink all day long. I just think it's so cute together, but I don't generally go for yellow alone, which is ridiculous because my daughter looks gorgeous in yellow. I look pretty good in yellow. Like it complements my skin tone really good. I just don't go for it. Don't know why. I just like pinks a little bit better, which is why my hair is pink. So this first row is going to be a little bit tricky because I'm going to show you what we got to do when we get to the end of the row. We have to go up and around and go back down the other side of the row. So instead of ending the row, chaining up and going on top of this, we're going to crochet along this edge. Benny. Well, his mommy can't keep opening the door for you. I'm doing a tutorial. Can you lay down? Thank you. Just lay down. He's been acting real weird this morning. Alright. So we're 
almost to the end of the row. So this last stitch where the knot is, you're going to put three double crochets in that in that knot. So one, two, three. And that's getting us around to the back side of the water. Getting us around to the back side of the stitches. Alright, so now we crocheted up this side and we're going to rotate it around. And now we are going to work into those same stitches. And if you have to pull this apart to see where you're working, just pull it apart and see where you're working. Okay, see? See all those holes? That's where you need to work at. We're going to go across and we're just going to put a double crochet in each one of those stitches. So because we had 30 double crochets plus the two extra, this side should have the two extra on this end piece plus 30 double crochets. But if you don't have that perfect amount, it don't matter. So don't worry about it. Don't even count this part. It doesn't matter. As long as it kind of lays flat, this curling part up at the end is normal. That Don't worry about that either. And I'm crocheting over that tail so I don't have to weave it in later. Because once this gets stuck on your your headrest, the um, it's not going to move around enough that that tail is going to want to wiggle out. Usually the tail will wiggle out if you have a lot of movement. This is just going to sit on your headrest and it's going to stay there. And the reason we're using anti-pilling acrylic, I don't know if I said this already, but the reason we're using anti-pilling acrylic is because I was driving down the street the other day. Because I made jujus out of regular acrylic and I was like, the reason I made them out of acrylic and not cotton is because cotton tends to, the sun will dye it out. So, or bleach it out. So if you do this out of cotton, your headrest is going to bleach out way faster. And where I live, I've put cotton things I've made outside and within a couple of days they are completely bleached white. And with anti-pilling acrylic specifically, or, or acrylic in general, because it's a plastic type product, it doesn't tend to lose its color as easily. It will fade some over time, but it's not going to lose its color as easily. So I did Juju's headrest covers in just a plain pink acrylic yarn. The reason I'm doing anti-pilling acrylic is because I saw this van driving down the street yesterday or the day before or sometime last week, I don't remember. And she had a steering wheel cover made out of regular old cotton and it was so pilly. And it was probably beautiful when she started because it was made in, out of like granny squares. It was so cute. It was on her steering wheel. But from the constant movement and rubbing on the steering wheel, it got very pilly. Now, because I know I'm going to get asked, what is pilly? It's when you get those little fuzz balls on your yarn from either washing it or from, like, your arms. Like, if you made a sweater and your arms are rubbing against your armpit, it will get really, like, a lot of pills there. We've all had a blanket that's had pills on it. All right, so we got down to the end. We got down to our last double crochet and we're just going to slip stitch to that very first chain three any way that you can and we're going to chain three again and what we're going to do here is we are going to do uh, we're going to change it up to a granny stitch so we're going to put three double crochet in that very first stitch and then we are going to skip one, two, and then go into the third and put three more. Okay, that's all we're doing. I'm not doing a chain one between the granny stitches because I want it a little closer together. I want the holes a little closer together and I want the fabric to be a little more sturdy. Two, skip two and go into the third and put three double crochet. And this is how we're turning it into the granny stitch. Two, three. Now, if you're doing this for a wheelchair or like a larger space than just a headrest, you may want to do another increase on this row. So, whereas I put three here, you would put three here and then put in the very next stitch three. So, that way it expands out wider for the bigger width of the back of your wheelchair. Let me show you. 
All right, so if you're not do if you're just doing a headrest cover, just continue. Skip two and do a granny shell, which is three double crochet. Skip two, go follow around. All right, if you're doing a wheelchair cover, exactly the same as before. Chain three, put two double crochet in that same stitch. But in the next stitch over, or just skip one instead of skip two, just put another granny shell. And it will make this part get a little bit wider. So we're doing two tutorials at once, you got it, see? And it will make this part wider for the wider base of your wheelchair. And then you go around and you skip two and continue on with the pattern, okay? But since we're doing a headrest cover, we can have it start to like, instead of going out further like you would need for a wheelchair, we need it to go out and down a little bit. So, skip in two, putting a double crochet here, or a granny shell. Skip two, granny shell. Skip two, granny shell. All right, so back to the steering wheel cover because I think that's what I was talking about. Um, this anti-pilling acrylic, skip two, granny shell. This anti-pilling acrylic is not gonna peel. Um, so because it's on a headrest or for your backrest for your wheelchair, you, you're gonna get a lot of friction from your head moving or your back moving or whatever up against the fabric. And this is less likely to get pills or the fuzzy bumps. And if it starts to get the fuzzy bumps, wash it and those fuzzy bumps come off. You don't have to cut them off like you do with like regular acrylic or anything like that. So that's why I chose the anti-pilling acrylic for this. I highly suggest you do the same. Uh, for this headrest, we only need, I think I'm, I'm, think I'm, I'm able to do two headrests with one ball of yarn. I think for a wheelchair cover, I think two to three would probably cover the entire back of your wheelchair if that's what you wanted. I don't think it would be, I know that it wouldn't be more than three. I would get three just to be on the safe side. Let's get two and the third. All right, so see how this is looking already. This is gonna be on the very top of our headrest and this is gonna start to come down a little bit around the top part where it starts to, you know, reach the back of your head. Skip two, double crochet. Well, actually, granny shell, not double crochet. Skip two, granny shell. Now, if your stitches don't equal the right amount skip two double crochet when you get around to the edge you have an extra stitch or you have not enough stitches just fudge it it's not going to matter it's on the back of your car seat nobody's going to count your stitches it's not going to make a difference in the design of this i'm fudging my way right here because i felt like that was an elongated stitch so i'm going to put an extra I just skipped one and skipped skip two and put it a granny shell. Cause this stitch seems too long, like I stretched it out too much. Yep, see, and that still works because it's still curving. See, sometimes you can fudge your way through it. It does not matter in the grand scheme of things. I can see like if you're doing a garment that has like armholes and like neck holes and stuff like that, like Size matters way more when it comes to crochet hooks. Size matters way more when it comes to like your stitches and stuff. When you're doing stuff like this, when you're sizing it to the item that you're crocheting it for, it's not going to matter. It's really not. And I make these a little bit tight so that when it goes over the headrest, I have to stretch it quite a bit to go over the headrest just so that it it stays on there and doesn't slip off, you know? And that's what I did with Juju's and that's what I'm doing with this one. I'm making them a little bit smaller so that they fit snugly on there. So the two measurements you're gonna need for your headrest is you're gonna need across the top of the headrest measurement and you're gonna need from the top 
down measurement on how long the headrest is so that you know how many rows to make this to cover the headrest. And when we're done with this, I will take you out to my van and I will show you how I put this on, if I can figure out a way to do that. Because I don't have, I don't have a tripod in my car. <laughs> so we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll have Juju come out there with me and just hold the camera. And then see, I have one, two, three, I have four stitches left, so I'm still going to just skip two and a granny shell. And then there's only one stitch between the last granny shell and the first granny shell, but it does not matter. Slip stitch to join. This is what it should look like. Okay, so this is the granny row. See how it curves up on either side? That's because it's going to curve around the top of your headrest. And actually, it's going to go this way, so you got to like make sure you're facing the right way when you're crocheting and the side that's facing you that's the right side so that's the side you want on the outside of the the car seat cover that's the side you want that's facing outward so because I was crocheting this way it curved this way so I just got to flip it around this way and continue on now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually crochet backwards so I guess there's not gonna be a right side so I'm going to slip stitch backwards into the, the space we just created in between the granny shells. We're going to chain three and put two more double crochets in that space. Even though it's not a chain space, it's just a space. We're going to do that all the way around. Every time there's a hole, put a granny shell, three double crochet. And we're just going to continue this row around and around, back and forth actually until it is long enough to go over your headrest and then when it gets to the part where it's long enough to go over your headrest you're going to do a row of single crochet because single crochet is tighter it has less stretch and it will actually bring in the fabric a little bit so that it wants to hold on to the bottom of your headrest Now, if you're one of those people that's cruising around in a wheelchair and you make one of these for your the backrest of your wheelchair, I want to see pictures in some way, shape, or form. If you hold the camera above your head, if you can, and take a picture of your backrest behind you, I don't care if it's just a little clip and you can send it to my email. I don't care if you post that public or not. I just would really like to see if you, you do that because I think that would be really cool. <laughs> so totally cool see a little piece of my tail I'm just going to weave that back in and we're done I can't believe I went through all the yarn I pulled out at the beginning of this already I like to keep a bunch pulled out so that I'm not fighting it as we're crocheting along so I keep a bunch pulled out and drape it across my desk. Oops. I really, this color is so sunny and fun and summery. We're just going to go up and around the corners like we did the last row. There's, there's no increasing anymore. Unless you need it wider for the the if you have a really fat headrest or like a wheelchair cover if you need to do an increase to make it wider do it on the ends do it on the ends and just if you're doing this for a wheelchair and you need this base wider instead of just going in the holes here do a granny shell in this hole do a granny shell on in the middle stitch of this shell and then do a granny shell here and it will widen it out even further for wheelchairs or bigger chairs because you could do like a seat you can do any seat back with the same pattern but as for me and us that are doing headrests we just need it to cur keep curling up oops totally split that
I like making these. They're fun. They're quick. They're easy. If you know anybody that got like a new car and that would like something like this, I think that would be cool because that's what I did for my daughter. <laughs> she was really excited to have crochet stuff in her car, which is funny because if you guys remember like a year or two ago, she didn't want crochet nothing. She was embarrassed by crochet. She wouldn't wear crochet out in public. Now crochet is the norm and it's really getting popular with the young people. So now, like, she wants crochet everything because, you know, it's cool now. And I'm like, babe, I was always cool. You just didn't know it. <laughs> uh. It's funny because she's, she's about to turn 18. Matter of fact, while you're watching this video, she's turning 18 tomorrow. So her birthday is the 23rd to turn it 18 and um she's so much like me it's so funny she's so much like a teenage version of me but like better without the trauma it's really crazy it's like she's what i could have been without the trauma you know and now she's like mom is cool like mom does cool stuff she likes going to the thrift, not the thrift store. I mean, she does like going to the thrift store, don't get me wrong. She likes going to the craft stores with me now. It's amazing. All right, if I could stop slipping out. We're back around to the front, to the first section, so I'm gonna slip stitch. And we're just gonna continue this row after row. So we're gonna slip stitch backwards into where we just slip stitched to join. Chain three, two double crocheting that hole. And do exactly what we did in the last row. Just go around in every hole. And see, this will start to want to fold over. See how it's doing that? And this will be on the top of your headrest. And then as we go, it will grow this way. So just keep doing this until you get the length of your headrest or, or back seat. Not back seat. Backboard or whatever you call it behind your back on the chair there that's called the back of your seat I mean I'm even thinking like if I want to do this I could do the headrest cover right and then I'm like okay but what if I cover the whole seat in crochet because how cute would that be and I'm thinking I could basically do it <laughs> if I crocheted an opening here to go over and around the headrest cover and then I crochet around the actual back of my seat in my van, right? I mean, that might be a bit hot because it's really hot here, but <laughs> I still got big ideas. It would be super cute. I know that I could do it. Am I gonna do it is the question. Probably not because I get really hot. Because I live I live in Virginia, and while Virginia is not quite Florida, sometimes it feels like Florida. It gets so hot and humid here, and sometimes it's as hot and humid here as it is in Florida. So when I first started going to Florida on vacations, I was living in Michigan, and the dress difference between Michigan weather and Florida weather is huge. <laughs> and I could not deal with the heat. Neither could Mr. Cinnamon because he's from California. And he's from by the ocean. So he never had humidity until he moved to Michigan. And certainly never anything like Florida. And so we would we would be so miserable and when we went to Florida when we lived in Michigan. But when we moved to Virginia, our bodies acclimated really well to the heat. I mean, it took us a couple years to really get used to it. But now Florida doesn't feel like any different than Virginia sometimes. And so we are we can go to Florida in the summertime and it not bother us because we know to keep hydrated and we know to go indoors when it's the hottest part of the day. You know, really we only go out like in the early morning hours and after like three. Because even though it's still hot from three to five in Florida or Virginia, um, it's not nearly as bad as a noon. So, 
still don't know how good this would be on my back in a car in the heat and the humidity and be it will make my back all sweaty that'd be gross I probably should have went out to Juju's car and measured how many rows I did of this for her car seat cover so I can have an idea I really think it was like 12 rows or something like that of the the granny shell it's like either 12 or 15 but measure it measure it measure it measure it if you don't have a tape measure go out to your car and measure it that way just keep trying it on make sure it's long enough Come back to the beginning, slip stitch to join. All right, you guys got this figured out. I'm gonna flip it back the other way, slip stitch into the, the space again. We're just gonna keep doing this until it's long enough to cover our car seat. So just keep doing the same row. And when it's long enough to get to the bottom of your headrest, then put in a row or two of single crochet and do that row kind of tight because you want it to like really hold on to the car seat. And then um, I will be back when this is long enough to do the single crochets. I'm gonna let you guys crochet on your own. This is like real fun. And then obviously you don't have to make more than one if you don't want to. I mean, if you're the only person that gets in the car and you only want it on the driver's side, only put it on the driver's side. If you want a matching set, you can do it on the front and or on the passenger and the driver's seat. If you have like I, I think my car has headrests in the back seat too. I don't know. I don't ever sit back there, but I'm pretty positive it does. You can make it for all the headrests in your car if you want. You can be extra. That's fine. You can have the whole car matchy poo poo. But for me, I'm just making two of these. So just repeat this tutorial again and make a second one that matches your uh, first one. And if you want to make it exactly the same as the first one, because you are measuring it, write down little notes. Have like a little notepad handy or use your phone and email yourself or text yourself how many starting rows you did, what size hook you used. So I did a chain of 30 plus 3. Whatever your starting chain is, write that down so that you don't forget. So you can do the exact same on the second one so it's the same size. And then how many rows you did before you made the single crochet row. Do all that. It will make your life easier. And as it is, it's hard enough making two identical things. Because we always put in a mistake or something in one of them every time. <laughs> and it will always be slightly different. Or we crochet looser. And so one will be bigger than the other one. Or we forget what hook we use because we set it down for a minute. You know. So write those little notes down when you're doing something like this because if you're going to make more than one, you want them to be the same size. I'm loving this yellow color. I don't even remember buying this yellow color. Well, it had to have been a while ago because it's got the old label on it. It's so pretty though. Alright guys, I'm going to pause here and like I said, I will be back. At the end of, I want to say 12 or 15 rows. We'll, we'll see. I'll let you know when we get there. And um, I'll see you in a few minutes. Alright, so. Let's see how many rows I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Wow, that was pretty close to on the nose. So I went out and I actually measured my car. This is actually a little bit too wide for my headrest is nine inches. So this is actually a little bit wider than nine inches. It got fatter as we went along. So if I were to make a second one, I would probably make it just under nine inches. So it would be a little bit narrower, but it's not going to make a difference. Like I said, it's going to stretch over. And also because this is kind of a flat panel, stretching it this way to go over the the headrest is actually going to make it a little bit shorter. So I think it's going to work out. I didn't take this out, but I took my tape measure out. So I think it's going to be fine. So, and then I also measured, apparently my headrest from top to bottom is also nine inches. So I know that this is going to stretch some. So what I want to do is give it like a little pull and a stretch 
and then measure it. So we are just at nine inches, which is absolutely perfect. So what I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna start doing a single crochet row. And yeah, I'm on the right side. Doesn't matter though, because we went back and forth and there is no right side or wrong side, but because that tail was out, the tail is on the inside. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, actually I think I'm gonna do half double crochets instead of single crochets here. You can do single crochet, single crochets will give it a tighter stitch with less stretch that will help hold it on, on the under part of the headrest. But I actually prefer doing, you can do two rows of single crochet or you do half double crochet. It doesn't matter. And so just in every, every stitch, so in the top of the three double crochets for every granny square or granny shell, Bentley, can you just hang on a second? Put a half double crochet or put a single crochet and then do a second row of single crochet. Actually, I might do two rows of half double crochet just so it's a little bit longer. Doesn't need to be longer, but just, I think we're gonna do two half double rows. You can do as many rows of single or half double or however you wanna do that. But if you make these stitches a little bit tighter, it will help the headrest to stay on a little bit better. Not that we've had any problems with my daughter slipping off at all, but just to be on the safe side. Just half double crocheting all the way around. And that's what it will look like on the bottom, but I think I'm going to do one more row of that as well. And at this point, before you put on that bottom row, go out there and see if it fits on there good. See if you want to add a little extra length or frog back a row. Or just make sure it fits. And that's something you're going to want to do. Is check it a couple of times and just make sure that it fits the way you want it to fit. If not, I mean... You frog it back and make it a little bit smaller or bigger or whatever you need it to be. Or you can add a row or take a row off. Bentley, lay down. He's being very uh, whiny this morning. And Scarlet's not feeling good either. She got sick on the stairs because they decided they were going to eat wood yesterday. And all three of them were chewing on a piece of firewood. And apparently Scarlet's an airhead and swallowed some of it. So one or two rows of single or half double crochet, whatever you prefer. At the bottom of this... And then when you get done, just snip it and go put it in your car. And then you can work on the second one. You don't have to do it all in one day. You just make one at a time and, you know, or make just one. I really like this yellow color. It's so funny because I had no idea I had this color on my shelf. I know that I have fluorescent yellow. And I know that I have pale yellows. But I didn't know I had this gorgeous, like, rich lemon color. This is gorgeous. And one of the things I like about anti-pilling acrylic is, A, it doesn't pill up on you. It doesn't get all fuzzy. But it's also, it's a nice soft yarn. So it feels good on your skin. Like, it feels good worked up. It's squishy. It's luscious. Anti-pilling acrylic is my favorite fiber to work with, aside from bamboo. I also like bamboo. But I don't know how bamboo would stand up to headrests, so I wouldn't. And bamboo is kind of expensive, so I, I wouldn't do that anyway. All right, we're back around to the front. So we're going to slip stitch to join. And you can end it here at this row, or you can add, I think I'm going to add one more row. I'm just going to chain one, half double crochet. And I think for this row, I'm going to put in a couple of decreases just to make it a little bit tighter under the bottom so that it curls up underneath Shh. the bottom of the headrest. Again, you don't have to do that. 
and it doesn't matter where you put the decreases in. So I'm going to put a decrease here. So I'm going to do a half double crochet two together. <clears throat> he may have to go outside. Because we put the pool up and he doesn't know what to do with the pool yet, we've been making sure the dogs don't go outside without being watched. And they're used to going in and out of the doggy door at their own will. And so he's getting used to that because he's never seen the pool because he was born in September. I got him in November. So he's like, what is this pool nonsense? Right, I'm going to put another decrease. And I'm just, I'm not even thinking about the decreases. I'm just going some and putting a decrease. Going some and putting a decrease. My goal is probably four or five decreases. Just to bring it in a little bit for underneath the bottom of the headrest. my bookshelf and it scared the dogs so they came running to the front door thinking somebody was out there. Hey! Scarlet! Scarlet! Juju! Alright, I'm going to put another decrease. Then I'm going to crochet a little more. So that was, I think, three decreases we put in. Sorry for the chaos. It's what it's like living in the Cinnamon Stitches house. Bentley, you have a dog bed. Go lay in it. He is scratching at his rug, trying to get it to lay just the right way. He does the same thing with his crochet blanket. Baby, I can't pet you right now. Hang on. We're almost done. We're almost done, Bubba's. We're almost done. You almost talked at me. What do you need? He's so cute. He's looking at me. He's like, Mom, can I please? Can I please? What happened? All right, I think I'm gonna put one final decrease right before we end the row. And I already lost track how many decreases we did because Bentley is disturbing me. But this is gonna be our last stitch. Slip stitch to join. Slip stitch one more over just because. Cut off a long enough tail that we can weave that in easily and this is done. We got the first one done. This is what it should look like. Here's the top and here's the bottom. See it comes in just a little bit right there so it will like fit around the under part of the the headrest. So there you have it. Make one for just the driver. If you're the driver make you can also the girls have decided that the passenger is the passenger princess. So if you're the passenger princess and your husband drives you everywhere or whoever drives you around, make one for your side of the car because you're the passenger princess and you deserve it. You can also um, embellish this with like a crocheted heart or a crocheted flower or a, a rainbow or whatever you want to put on your little headrest. There are lots of tutorials for appliques on the internet. So you can put an applique on here and just sew it down and make it extra. So yeah, definitely, I'm thinking I'm definitely going to need another one because I don't think, <laughs> I didn't realize I would use so much yarn. So I'm going to say, you're definitely going to need two balls of this for two headrests. And um, yeah, that is it for today. Thank you for tuning in with this tutorial. If you make yourself a headrest or a backrest or whatever kind of rest, based off this tutorial, I would love to see what you created. You can post it in the Facebook group. You can email me. You can post it on Instagram and hashtag cinnamon stitches or at sign cinnamon stitches and I will see it. So that's all one word. Hashtag cinnamon stitches, no spaces, or at sign cinnamon stitches, no spaces. And it will 
show me what you made. Or you can email me or you can post it in the Facebook group. But if you're going to join my Facebook group, you have to answer the three questions or you will automatically be denied entrance. And you have to answer them correctly. So with that, I'm going to let you go and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.